Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to fix an air conditioning system or get it back up and running uh, without a multimeter. All right, so there happens to be a time when maybe a technician is just uh, spending time with the family or whatever, um, and you're at a friend's house and uh, the air conditioner goes down. You don't want to run back and get the service truck right away. You want to try to figure out what's going on. So, you know, the very first thing you do is you always turn the power off up at the disconnect. Uh, there should be an outdoor disconnect right near within arm's reach of the outdoor condenser. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pull this screw off. So if you notice that the fan inside is blowing, okay, the filter is clean, but the outdoor unit is not turning on. All right. So if you see that the fan is not turning on or just the compressor is not turning on in, in the inside here, and you can just tell that by noise and by visual for the at least the condenser fan. All right. You'll also... You can also feel the refrigerant flow on the copper line set, all right, um, if the compressor is running or if it's not, all right. So if they are both not running, the condenser fan and the compressor, then it's likely that if you do have power at the disconnect, that it may be a capacitor or a contactor issue or there's some type of low voltage issue. So I'll show you how you determine that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take this cover off. Usually you need a 5 16 nut driver to do that. Once we've pulled that cover off, we see that the contactor right here actually is sucked in, okay? So the middle part of the contactor is sucked in, which means that the 24 volts from the inside is actually applying power to the contactor, and everything from the inside is good because it's sending the signal back out to the outdoor unit to allow the 240 volts to go through in order to turn the outdoor air conditioning on. All right, so so we see that that's good. So already we know that uh, the 24 volt fuse in the inside is good. We know that the 20 we're getting the 24 volt signal out here. So we know that basically our problem is isolated out here only, not inside. All right. Um, we don't know if we have power right right at the uh, line voltage coming in. We could check the breaker just to make sure if it's labeled. We can check to see if there's voltage there, all right? Um, but if you don't have a multimeter, you know, you're not going to be able to determine this uh, right away. Uh, the very first thing that you're going to look at in here after looking at the contactor is you're going to notice that that capacitor right there, there's a couple ways to determine if a capacitor is bad visually. If you see that there's a mushroom on the very top of it, meaning that it's protruded upwards, okay? That's one way to tell that very likely that capacitor is bad. That's a dual run capacitor. The other way is just uh, checking the capacitor. If it seems very, very hot or, or very, very warm, um, that's an indication of a possible bad uh, capacitor. But not always, okay? Uh, but I will just tell you that a bad capacitor is going to be hotter than uh, one that's running properly. All right, but the mushroom top gives it away on this one, and it's saying that that is bad. If you also see, sometimes the capacitors will burst and they'll leak the fluid down. The fluid is kind of gummy, all right, um, or or you know a little uh, uh, sticky, all right. Um, that's another indication that that capacitor is bad. So the next thing that we're going to do, remember that the power is off right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take those quarter inch screws out, and we need to make sure that we, we replace this dual run capacitor with a capacitor that's exactly the same size. All right, if we don't install a capacitor that's the exact same size, then we could end up hurting and burning out the uh, either the fan motor or the compressor motor. All right, so that's the next thing that we're gonna do. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew these completely out. And now our capacitor is loose. All right, this particular capacitor is a 55 UF plus 5 UF. All right, it's a 370 VAC. So that's all you need. That is what you're going to need to uh, find the exact rate capacitor. So I'm going to go ahead out to the service truck and go ahead and find that. All right, so there's my new capacitor, 55 plus 5 UF. 440 slash 370. So most of the new capacitors that you're going to find are 440 and 370. So since this is a 370, we can replace it with a 370 or a 440 or a 370 slash 440 in this case. All right. So uh, if it did say 440 on it, then we could only replace that with a 440 or a 370 slash 440. 
So, uh, which of the wires right here, which wire goes to what? As you see right here in the top, it's, it's really rusted. You could take a little steel wool if you're concerned, and you could see it would say Herm. Um, here would say Fan, and this would say C for Common. All right, the brown wire is typically going to be the start wire for the condenser fan, but you need to just visually check that, and I can just follow the wire right in here, and you can look right in the top, right up here, and you can look right into the top of the unit and see that the brown wire is going to the condenser fan. You can also see that this blue wire, if you trace this out, is actually going to the compressor. So that's how you confirm that, all right? So on here, it says fan, all right, right here. So that's where the brown wire is going to go in this case. This says HERM, H-E-R-M, that means hermetically sealed compressor, and that's going to be our blue wire. Here is your C, all right, common, and then that's going to be where your yellow wire goes because your yellow wire is coming off of the contactor right here. All right, so that blue wire is actually the start winding in your compressor. This brown one right here, if you trace it in, that one is the start winding for your fan. So we just go ahead and pull that out. Remember the power is off, all right? So I typically, I'll do something like this, okay? Or I will take it like this, wiggle it and pull up, all right? You wanna make sure that you don't break those speed connectors, all right? Sometimes it's nice when you have like a contact, you can just rest it right on there and just pull off of that. And then that works pretty well too. All right, so we're gonna put our new connections on here. So we said yellow C. You could also take a picture of this before you do it, or you could also write in Sharpie those terminal colors. And if any of these speed connectors feel like they're going on loose, you need to recrimp them uh, with your wire strippers and cutters. Now, if I'm at a job site where I have one capacitor go bad and both units are the same age, I'll go ahead and do the homeowner a favor and I'll replace the other capacitor as well, all right? Because it doesn't take very long to determine that this is bad, and if you charge, you know, whatever it may be in an hour, you know, um, usually you can do this and write the service ticket up, you know, 20 minutes or whatever. So I usually go ahead and fill the rest of that hour by uh, replacing the other capacitor as well, and then you know, just charge them for that capacitor. This way, they don't have something silly happen and and the unit goes down again because hey, the service tech wasn't smart enough to you know, uh, or didn't pick up on maybe that he should or she should uh, replace that capacitor. So I just don't want something like that happening. And also, I mean, it makes sense, right? They don't last very long. Capacitors only last five to 10 years or so. Yeah, you, you can get away with one for maybe even, you know, 15 years. I've seen some, some last that long, right? But I've seen others fail even within four years, okay? This is a little bit too big now for the existing capacitor. So uh, what we could do is we can bend this and then re-screw it in. Some people uh, zip tie them with white cable ties. All right, we're gonna end up bending this metal and putting zip screws in. I'd like to do a favor to the next service tech who checks this to have the rating plate outside of the bracket so they can immediately see if they have the right capacitor in the truck. All right, but that's how you do it. Our capacitors go bad quite a bit. All right, last night I had two go bad at one job, so there was another two units, so I just replaced the capacitor in, in the other two units as well, just to make sure that the uh, homeowner wouldn't have that same problem again. All right, but that's how you do it. We're going to go ahead and see if she'll turn on now. All right, everything turns on. Now, if the homeowner says that the unit is not running, okay, but it is making a buzzing noise in the inside of here, then a lot of times that that means that the contactor is actually sucked down and it's allowing the 240 volts to go through. A lot of times that buzzing noise that you hear in this cabinet is actually the contact, which means that the low voltage is actually calling for the outdoor unit to turn on. All right, this is the same house. This air conditioner was running when I got here. I did absolutely nothing to this unit, okay? While I was servicing the unit next to it with a bad capacitor, all of a sudden, 
this unit wouldn't turn on. Guess what? Capacitor. Another bad capacitor that failed the exact same day that the one next to it did. They were both installed the same day. That just goes to show you uh, that when it's hot out, there's a lot of use. I mean, capacitors could go bad on the very same day. People have asked me, why are these capacitors going bad at, all at the same time? And I, I try to explain to them that it actually is normal. I try to explain to the homeowners that the capacitors actually go bad a lot of times near the same time frame, all right? Especially when there's a heavy load on the building. In this case, the same exact day. As you can see, there's actually a mushroom on the top of this as well, showing you that that capacitor is bad. Of course, you can uh, go ahead and read the microfarad reading between the two terminals, all right? So for the fan between C and fan, we should get 5 MFD. And between the C and the Herm, you should get 45 MFD, okay? You can check out my other videos in reference to how to test capacitors. I go over start capacitors, uh, super boost capacitors, dual capacitors, uh, single run capacitors. You know, I go, go over quite a bit on the capacitors. But you can check that out in reference to how to test them. But I can show you right now uh, why this unit's not running and it's from the capacitor being bad. And you can verify that just by that mushroom top. Right here, it's actually bulging, okay? Alright, I'm going to get this unit back up and running. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time. AC Service Tech Channel.